In this video, I'm gonna wrap up summarizing the quest lore for the Worgen starting zone. It's been quite a long journey, and I think it's time to finish up the end of this story. Now, this is the fifth episode in this series. So if you wanna start from the beginning, then go ahead and click this link right over here. I've also provided the links for every single episode down below, but let's get in there and see what's going on with Gilneas in World of Warcraft. Last time we rode out to meet up with Lorna Crowley at the outpost, because the Forsaken have taken over one of the mining towns nearby. Lorna says that we're surrounded by the Forsaken and that we need your help. She also says that the villagers of Emberstone survived most of the ravage of the curse. But as far as the Forsaken invasion, not so great. They've been taken as prisoners and are now forced to work in the mines as slaves. So Lorna wants you to free five of them within the Emberstone mine. Now you speak with Magda Whitewall. She knows what's up regarding going back into Gilnea's city. We're gonna be going up against an enemy that's superior in nearly every single aspect imaginable. Basically, she knows that a lot of people are gonna die. She says that she can't fight, but she can cook and wants you to collect 10 pieces of stag meat from the local stags within the area so that she can cook one last meal for those that won't live through the battle. Now you speak with Marcus. He was one of the few that escaped Emberstone Mine and says that an abomination known as Brothog worked the weak mine workers to death. Marcus's wife was one of those victims, and he says that he would like to have his wife avenged, but he's too weak to do it now. He wants you to put down Brothog the slave driver within Emberstone Mine. So now you head out, kill the stags for their meat, then you head into Emberstone Mine, killing the Forsaken for their slave keys, which you use to free the workers. Then you kill Brothog the slave driver to avenge Marcus's wife. Once that's all done, you head out of there and return to the stables to report. Lorna says that the freed villagers are eager to help us fight against the Forsaken in any way that they possibly can. Marcus thanks you for taking out Brothog and says that his people will no longer suffer because of that guy. He then rewards you with Marcus's pickaxe for having to avenge his wife. Magda thanks you for collecting the meat from the stags and says that our men and women will have one last good meal before heading into battle. Lorna now has a task for you. She tells you that the people are free, but the town of Emberstone is still occupied by the Forsaken. They're cut off from their main force, so now would be a really good time to drive them out. Lorna wants you to kill four Forsaken infantry, as well as their ruthless leader, Executor Cornell, and their scientist, Valnoff the Mad, who likes to experiment on villagers who are too weak to work in the so now you head out and make your way into Emberstone Village to reclaim the area. Once you arrive, you kill the four Forsaken infantry, as well as Executor Cornell and Valnov the Mad. Then you head back to Lorna to report. She says that we have the people of Emberstone on our side now, since you went in there and cleaned up the place. Now the time has come to reclaim the city of Gilneas. Lorna tells you that Liam will lead the charge in from this end, while King Greymane takes charge on the other districts. So now you charge in and complete different objectives in order to claim victory in the battle for Gilneas City. Once you're near Sylvanas, you engage in combat. King Greymane shows up in his new form as a worgen, and as Sylvanas tries to kill him with an arrow, Liam shields his father, taking the hit, thus killing him. And if you didn't understand before why Gen hates Sylvanas, that's why. Most people know that Liam died because of Sylvanas, but now you know exactly how that went down. Moving on. After witnessing the death of the prince, you head into the building nearby to speak with Lorna, who says that we've driven the Forsaken back, but really at what cost? She then rewards you with the marshalling point for everything that you've done so far. So Lorna says that we'll mourn Liam's death once this is all over, but there's the fact that we still have enemies within Gilneas. Now you're to follow Tobias Mismantle in the hunt for Sylvanas. So you head out with Tobias, running through the city, and hear word that Sylvanas will be in the cathedral very, very soon. So you head in there and hide in the water on the side. Then Sylvanas enters. You listen in on the conversation she has with General Warhal. He tells Sylvanas that Garrosh Hellscream isn't so sure about her being able to take Gilneas and asks for confirmation that she isn't planning on using the plague on the city, which she reassures him that she isn't as he leaves. Looks like even the orcs have a problem with that stuff being used. High Executor Crenshaw asks if the original plan to use the plague is really going to be cancelled, which she replies no, and that basically she's still going to use it on the people of Gilneas. I guess Sylvanas does whatever she wants, 
So it might be a really good idea to report this to whoever needs to know. From here, you head back to Greymane Court in order to speak with Lorna Crowley. She immediately says that we need to notify King Greymane about the plague being used and to tell her that we have trackers on Sylvanas as we speak. Also, he'll need to make a decision to either attack Sylvanas head on or evacuate the people as soon as possible. Now you head out and meet up with King Greymane. He says that as much as he wants a swift revenge for his son's death, it's important to honor Liam's memory by taking care of the people, because he was really into that. So Gen wants you to prevent the plague from being deployed, while he helps evacuate the men, women, and children. He also mentions that we captured a bombing bat, which you can use to destroy those trying to inflict the plague on the city. So you head outside to the bat and mount it, fly out to the Northgate River area, and begin bombing everything in sight. Once that's done, you head back to speak with Gen. He says that you did well, and that almost everyone managed to make it out. But now it's your turn to evacuate. Gen wants you to take a torch and make your way through the tunnel while trying to avoid the critters and ankle biters and whatnot. And once you get to the other side, you're to speak with Krennin. So you make your way through the tunnel. And once you get to the other side, sure enough, you run up to Krennin. He says that even though most of the people made it through, we're now surrounded by our own dead. Because when everyone escaped in a hurry, we kind of woke up a bunch of ghosts. So in Gilneas, it's tradition to bury a small memento on top of people's grave sites. Well, the stampede through the tunnel unearthed a lot of those mementos, upsetting the dead. So Krennin wants you to bring five of them back and see if we can return the dead to their eternal sleep. Now you head out, gather the five mementos, then you head back to Krennin. He says that he hopes that this works. And for the final step, Krennin wants you to take the now blessed offerings and lay them at Adaric's tomb, hoping that this will be able to lay the dead back to sleep. So you head out to the tomb, and once you place the offerings, there ends up being this really awkwardly framed cutscene. And now everything's focused on Liam's funeral, which was never talked about in the quests with Krennin just recently. I thought that we were trying to put a bunch of angry spirits back to sleep, but I guess they just wanted to jump to other topics. Anyways, after that's all done, you instantly show up in front of Krennin again, who says that the dead have returned to their slumber. I really wish they would have written that a bit more clear and maybe incorporated more about Liam's funeral in conjunction with the dead. I don't know, my own personal opinion. Let's move on. Krennin tells you that even though we lost the city, the dead have forgiven us. And now it's time to meet up with everyone at Keel Harbor and speak with Darius Crowley, who happens to be the person in charge until the king shows up. So now you head out and make your way towards Keel Harbor. Once you arrive, you run up to Lord Darius Crowley, who says that the Night Elves have brought their ships and are ready to offer us sanctuary in their lands. But there's one tiny problem. The orcs, who happen to be allied with the Forsaken, Mm, for the horde, are advancing upon us, enabling our ability to leave. The druids are trying to hold them back, but they're falling behind. Luckily, the night elves brought glaives, so guess what you're doing? Yep, you're gonna go out and destroy 40 orc raiders, eight wolf maw outriders, and four orcish war machines. So you hop into one of the glaives and take the orcs head on. Once you've done the damage, you head back to Darius. He says that it's almost over and that only one more obstacle is in the way. This directs you to talk to his daughter Lorna, who says that we've got to get rid of the flying gunship if we're to have any chance of escaping. So here's the plan. Lorna tells you that Keel Harbor had its share of rebel sympathizers back in the day, and she managed to round up a good amount of incendiary explosives that they stored in the storehouses nearby. So we're gonna hit the enemy with a small force so that we're undetected. The Night Elves have supplied hippogriffs to make this happen. You're to wait for Tobias to give you the signal when it's good to go. So now you wait and wait and wait some more. And then finally Tobias is like, let's go. So you mount one of the hippogriffs and ride out to the gunship. Once you arrive, you fight off the orcs and repel down to the main deck. Lorna takes over the ship and tells you to follow her down below. Once you get to the furnace room, she sets the explosives while you fight off a really big orc, only to jump on a wyvern once the gunship blows up. Upon returning to Keel Harbor, you run up to Lorna, who says that we're ready to leave and tells everyone to board the ship. You then run up to Admiral Nightwind, who asks if you're ready to set sail and that your people have been granted shelter in the lands of the Kaldori. You then set sail for Rutheran Village to begin your adventures as a full-fledged member of the Alliance. 
And that wraps it up for the Worgen starting zone. A bit longer than I anticipated, but we got through it. It's been really nice going back and seeing what I didn't read after all these years since, since Cataclysm came out. And if you're in the same boat that I'm in, then I hope that this was insightful. So what are we doing next? Well, we're gonna go to the Maw. I feel that it's time to catch up with more current content. Plus, I'm really excited to go over that stuff because I know a lot of people were really excited when the expansion launched and they just wanted to get to level 60 as fast as they could. So I know that a lot of people didn't read the quests. So get ready because we're heading into Shadowlands. And a big shout out to the Patreon subscribers for producing this video. Your support makes all the difference in this project and I can't thank you enough. If you'd like to help out with the channel, then go ahead and check out the Patreon link down below. Like and subscribe and we'll see you next week when we find out what's going on in the Tales of Azeroth. They've been taken as prisoners and are now forced to work as as mines and the slaves. <laughs>